Hello everyone, welcome to episode 3 of the Stormwatch Guide. So today what we're going to be getting into is engines and how you assemble engines and then also we're going to be making a really simple controller for the engines. So without further ado, um, let's get into building. Okay, so we have the Holt, this is the boat that we've been working on. Um, and what I've got in the back here, you can see I've got these big engine bays. Now these engine bays are going to be where we put all of our equipment in terms of engines and possibly even the fuel tanks can go in here. But what we're going to be doing is building the engines into these spaces here. They can extend out to the sides and we might even be putting some fuel tanks in. So to start off with, what I generally recommend is that you have your own standard of how you put piping and power into your vehicles. What color pipe represents a certain thing coming in and out of an engine. So for me, I'm going to start off with just the base color that I've been using for this boat or the actual engine itself. And we're just going to put the X plane on because this is going to have two different or two engines in it. Um, I'm also going to change my camera mode to free mode because I want to be able to move around like this while I'm building the engine so you guys get a better view. So what we're going to be doing is firstly finding a space that we can put these engines. Now I'm going to be using a small engine in each size, the prefabricated engines. Modular engines are something that we definitely have room to put in at a later date. But for now I just want to keep things as simple as possible. So I'm going to start us off with using a small engine. And so the small engine here, I'm going to be placing on this block here. I'm just going to place that there like that. And the engine is in. Now we've got a few different inputs and outputs. We've got exhaust, fuel, air, in and out coolant. So now that we've got the engines in, decide on what colors you're going to use for your piping. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use exhaust. It's going to be like a, a gray type color. And so I'm just going to put some temporary pipes just going up to go like, hey, this is the color. I like to use this kind of burgundy red for fuel. Um, coolant, I typically use like a dark blue. And then air, I'll use like a, a dark, dark green or something like that, or like a light gray. A light gray always work, works well. And for power, I do like using brown, but sometimes it's nice to go with kind of an orangey brown. So I'll just make that now. There we go, kind of almost like a bronzy color. And so now that we've got all the colors for our engine, we can start doing each little bit. Now, the first thing I would recommend is all these prefabricated engines, put a radiator in. Now, this radiator, all it needs, it doesn't have a specific direction. All it needs is that you have a in and an out. So we can see that this is the in coolant. So this is the cold coolant going into the engine. This is the hot side where that hot coolant from that's been heated by the engine is going out into the radiator. So that's just going to sit in there. It doesn't need to actually have air contact. It just needs to be connected to the engine. Next, we're going to get the fuel line. I'm going to put the fuel line wrapping over my engine here. So I'm just going to put the fuel, wrap it down between the engine piping for the power and stuff like that. And we're just going to bring it down here. I'm going to put a singular large fluid tank. I'm going to put it here. So this is going to be a seven, about 700 liters. And now what I can do is I can take fluid out using the pipe there, drag it along. Now what you may notice when we do actually start to try and run these engines is that they will probably stutter a little bit. And that's because actually we've got nothing pushing fuel into the engine. It's got quite the way to go upwards. Now the way you can fix that is either through well, two things, either an impeller pump driven by the engine or an electrical pump. And if you don't have the space, using an impeller pump is wise, but for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to use a couple fluid pumps. And they're not that expensive in Carimo, they're $100 for the sake of keeping your engine running really well and guaranteeing you have fuel pressure, it's always a good thing to do. Next thing is we're wanting to look at the exhaust. 
Now the exhaust is nice and easy, you just want to pipe it out of your engine. The other thing you can always do is use catalytic converters. Now catalytic converters, all they do is convert some of your exhaust into oxygen or in-game oxygen. That's all they do. This does mean that technically you can take some of that oxygen and put it back into your engine. Um, but we're not going to be doing that. We're just going to be using this outlet and putting a fluid pour out. Now we have the air intake. Air intake is going to be a similar story. I'm just going to put a... F I'm going to actually put a straight piece here. A straight pipe piece. I'm going to continue with the color of my air. And I'm going to put some air, filter, air filters like that. Now what we can do is we can connect the power up. So generally you'd have a clutch system and a gearbox system for some boats, for most cars, um, generally not for planes. What we're going to be doing though is I am going to be using these new small pitchable propellers. And the reason for that is that they've got good performance but they also i can use them to act as a buffer type clutch and you'll see what i mean in a second so i'm just going to put some piping there in fact i'll change the color to like a slightly more yellowish gray i will put the two pitchable propellers there next i'm going to get these to be maybe a three blade each and we're going to come inside here. I'm going to get the paint color of this. I'm going to bring it through here. Just bring this up to our engine. Doesn't matter what direction. Doesn't matter if it goes up or down. You don't need to pump the engine power. Think of it as like a mechanical linkage. But you can just link it through pipes. But otherwise, we don't actually need a clutch or anything on the... Now for your starter engines, what I generally recommend is... Look, limit them to about 14 RPS at first. You don't need a massive amount of rps then we can also get a gearbox and put them a gearbox on each engine now i'm going to have mine facing towards the engine now the thing to note about gearboxes they face towards the engine the ratio that you put into it it multiplies the rps and divides the torque if it's facing away from the power source of the engine it multiplies the torque and divides the rps so I'm going to put this at a 3 to 2 ratio on each one. And so that 3 to 2 ratio is just going to be like, hey, if we put 10, if we have 10 RPS at the engine, it's then going to go and multiply it by a ratio of 3 to 2. So 1.5, it's going to give us 15 RPS out, but it's going to take our torque. If our torque was, let's say, let's say 95, and so we're going to get 60, I think. Yeah. yeah. And so what that means is that we'll have less grunt, but we'll have more, more speed. So that's just something you always got to consider. Now, another thing we can also add um, is generators. Now, these generators, are, you have three different sizes of generators. I'm going to use small generators because actually you don't need much more than that on something as small as this. And that should be mostly sorted. Now, small engines like this, they have a limiter built into them, so they can't exceed the RPS that you set as the limit. So what this means is that we can really simplify the engine control system, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to now put in a helm. And I'm going to put this helm in, I'm going to just turn off my X-plane, I'm going to pick a colour, I'm going to pick dark grey for this, these interior sections here. So I'm just going to put that there, and one of the things we're going to put in is a throttle lever now this throttle lever um, i might put it there oh it feels more natural to have it on on the left so we're going to have it on the left and if it becomes an irritation with time it becomes an irritation with time i'm just going to build this little kind of esky area up and then you can just go in underneath still but what this throttle is going to be this is going to be our engine throttle and we're just going to put the sensitivity down on that. And so what this is going to be is this is going to be the throttle going to our engines through our microcontroller. So first we're going to start off the microcontroller editor. We'll go 
call this, you know, you can call this whatever you want. I'm going to call it um, Prefab Engine Controller. Use my capitals. And just a little bit of logic. So we're going to have a um, engine on off. This is going to be the engine switch. We're going to have engine starter. This is going to be what starts the engine. We're going to have RP, RPS in. So that's the engine RPS. We're going to have a throttle in. And we're going to have a throttle out. It's going to be an output throttle out. Now, when we go into our logic, what we're going to do is we're going to grab all of our nodes, we're going to spread them out, and we'll start them off. So, first things first, let's get the starting system working. So, we'll do, we're going to need to get a less than. This is just a, something that tests, look, if A is less than B, it outputs true. So, we're going to do then an and block as well. I'm going to get a constant number. So hook the engine on off to one of the ands, hook the less than to the and, and output to the starter. Now this is the bit here. So if A is less than B, we want to, and this is on, we want to start the engine. So if our RPS value A is less than B, which is going to be a value of three. So if our RPS is less than three and our engine's on, start the engine next what we're going to do is we're going to take our throttle in and we're going to put it into a function now i'm going to take my rps in i'm going to take my throttle in and i'm also going to create a property um, number and this is going to be idle rps i'm going to set this to five put that into my z now what we're going to do from this is we're going to say well okay so the rps that we have and compare it to the idle rps and then just add the normal throttle so we can start off by going clamp and this is going to clamp the the little idle idler part of this function um between zero and one what we want to do is go well idle so idle RPS, which is our Z value, minus the RPS in, which is our X value. I put between zero and one. So if our idle RPS is five, so we've got a value of five, and we take away our RPS in, so if our RPS was two, we'd get a value of three, but we clamp it to one. And then we're going to plus Y. And then we can get a switch box. Now the switch box is for if the engine is on, we actually output a throttle value. If we, if it's off, we just put nothing out. So let's go get our prefab microcontrollers. I like my microcontrollers to be yellow so I can just clearly see what is a microcontroller, what isn't. Make sure your X-plane is on if you'd like me and have two engines. Now that we've got that, that's pretty much it. And we should be able to assuming all of our electric is connected it is not we need to hook up our, our little button components and we also want to hook up our generators directly to the battery so now that we've got that let's save this um, as the whole mark a and let's spawn this in and see how the engines work we can hop in we can turn our turn our engines on you can see we can hear the pumps running so I'm just going to shut this door here. I'm going to open up this little section here. We're just going to hop in. You can see our engines are running bang on 5 RPS. Isn't that good? You know, they're just, they're just vibing. They're just vibing. Got my throttle up. You can hear both of them have revved up. But we are not, um... We're not overshooting that maximum RPS that we set with the limiter. And if I turn my engines off, they just completely die down. 
controls for these little bits here are going to be super simple if you want to copy what i'm doing with this layer of the propellers feel free to do so otherwise don't worry about it but this is just going to be something super simple all it is is an add block here get a subtract block put it on the other side and we're just going to do some very simple number logic a and d is going to be going to the b values the a value is going to come from w and s and then the a minus b is over here and the a plus b is over here so turn these on and if i just hold w you can see we're moving forward and i'm holding a it's fine we're turning i can hold w and d and we should be turning right moving forward I should be able to hold D and one goes in. Oh, look at that. Isn't that awesome? Point is, this is how you make engines. This is how you get them to work. This is how you can make a really basic kind of propeller based steering system with these new propellers. And I think we've done very well today. Um, but thank you guys for watching. In the next episode, hopefully we'll have this boat fully running to the point that we can actually take it on the open ocean and get it to work. So... I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.